Okay, let's talk about solving this particular equation. Now, if you look at this equation, uh, of course, when we're trying to solve any equation, we're trying to solve for the variable, okay? And the variable in this particular equation is x, okay? It's x uh, and not e. Now, some of you might, um, might have thought, well, e, it's a variable, and it is a variable. It doesn't represent a variable as you want to think of a variable, like, say, 2x equals 10. It's not an unknown value, okay? E is actually a known value. So if you weren't um, quite sure about that, well, I'm going to explain this further. But this particular type of equation is called an exponential equation because the variable is located in the exponent. So, for example, if you have, let's say, 2 to the fourth power, this is a power, 2 is the base, and 4 is the exponent. Okay, so the variable that we're trying to solve for is in the exponent, so we would refer to this type of equation as an exponential equation. And I threw an ex a little bit of an extra twist in here because I did throw in this little special number E, which uh, um, you definitely want to be familiar with. It's extremely, extremely important in mathematics. So uh, before we get started on this, of course, I'm going to fully explain uh, this equation. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most robust online math programs out there. But you'll have to be uh, the judge of that. Um, my math program uh, uh, consists of several, several many, many uh, math courses, okay? So, of course, it would be at the middle and high school and more advanced levels, okay? And all my uh, courses include complete comprehensive lessons, and I literally solve thousands of problems with video-based explanations and a lot of other goodies as well. So I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video if you want to check that out. Now, if you've been following me on YouTube um, uh, for any length of time, or if you're just new to my YouTube channel, or you to my uh, videos here. First of all, thank you for spending a little time with me. But um, as a math teacher of several decades, okay, of teaching, I'm going to tell you right now that note taking is absolutely critical in in mathematics. Okay, it's just the trend, and I've seen this over the years. Is the students who get those top grades have the top notes. Okay, so the trend is this: those who take great notes generally do great in math. And the reverse is true, okay? If you're not taking uh, good notes, you're likely struggling in math. So you can kind of get a sense of where you're at uh, if you're studying mathematics, which I assume that you are if you're interested in this video, okay? Really, really take a hard look at your notes. Your notes should be of the type of quality where you can uh, you know, give them to somebody else and someone can actually learn by just reading your notes. That's the kind of level of... Um, you know, professionalism you want to put in to your notes. But um, if your notes aren't there yet, okay, of course you want to work on getting them there, I'm going to leave a link to uh, my notes, okay, you can go ahead and get those if you like, because you need something to uh, study from, okay. So I offer pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry, but you can find a link to those notes um, underneath this video or in the description as well. Okay, so now let's get to this problem. Now, before I get to the actual problem, let's just do an easier version of the problem, okay, of a particular type of problem. So let's say I have um, 2x equals 8, okay? So 2x equals 8. Now, hopefully, okay, you can solve this problem. So you're like, eh, 2 to the what power is 8? Well, if we just think of this as 2x equals, if we can rewrite 8, where it has the same base as 2, and we say, oh, well, it can be 8. We can think of this as 2 cubed, and that would be nice because, check this out, uh, this has the same base, so 2 to what power is equal to 2 to the third power? Well, obviously, x is equal to 3, okay? So when x is 3 um, in this particular power, it solves this equation. But... This uh, particular exponential equation is super easy, okay? Now, not everything is going to be that easy because as soon as I make the problem a little bit crazier, like this, 2 to the x power 
equals 10, well, now we have a different situation because I can't express 10 as a power of 2, right? So 2 cubed is 8, and 2 to the 4th is what? That's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 16. And 10 is like right there, right? So 2 to the what? Well, it's going to be somewhere between 3 and 4, right? So like 2 to the 3.2 maybe is going to be equal to 10. So this type of problem, okay, is now it's not so easy to solve, right? And it is an exponential um, equation, okay, because the exponent, uh, the variable is an exponent. So this is a, a kind of basic uh, uh, version or basic example of the problem we're going to be doing here in a second. Okay, so let's just talk about real quick, how do we solve exponential equations? So one, you got to recognize it is an exponential equation, okay, because the variable is an exponent. So exponential equations, we solve them by using logarithms, okay, logarithms. That's what we're going to be using in this particular equation. And when you have a logarithmic equation, you solve that uh, with exponents, writing um, the expression as an exponent. So I actually have done uh, a couple, oh, I don't know, handful of videos on my YouTube channel explaining the relationship between logarithms and exponents. But this is really, really important stuff. Okay, so if you have not, not, have not yet studied logarithms, then you might be a little bit mm, lost in this video. But stick with it, okay, because it's not going to be, um, I don't think, overly difficult for you to understand. Now, a logarithm, okay, again, uh, this is, requires a full lesson, but if you have your calculator, a scientific calculator, the handy, look on your calculator, and you should see this button, an LOG button. Now, remember, not your basic calculator, scientific calculator. And if you have your cell phone, uh, most cell phones, you could turn your calculator into something like a scientific calculator version. So this is a logarithm. We call this a common logarithm. And then you should have this other little button called LN. This is also a logarithm. Now, this logarithm is what we call log base 10, or the common logarithm. And this guy here is log base e, okay, what we call a natural logarithm, okay? Now, I'm going to get to this uh, nice little value e here in a second, but let's get to this uh, problem, and let's see how we can solve for this variable here uh, using logarithms. So what we're going to do is just take the log of both sides, all right? So we're going to go log 2 to the x power is equal to log of 10. Now, in your calculator, I can literally just plug this in, and this is just some value, some decibel value, okay? Now, we have a property that says um, when we have the log of a power, this little exponent, this x, I can actually drop it down in front of this little expression here. So, in other words, I could put this x in front of the log, so I can rewrite this as x log 2 equals log 10. Now, don't get um, overly confused here. These log 10s, log 2s, you can go into your calculator, and these are just going to be nothing but numbers, decimals. So now you just have like a basic equation here, right? So this is nothing like, don't get confused, this is like x times 3 equals 12, or 3x equals 12. So to solve for x, all I have to do, okay, is literally divide both sides of the equation by log 2, okay? So x is equal to log... 10 divided by log 2. And, of course, there's a few other things about logarithms that we can kind of get into, but this would, be, this would be the answer. You can go ahead and actually compute this decimal, okay, on your calculator. And that's it. So this is how you solve a um, basic exponential equation. All right. Now, let's get to the problem at hand. All right. So here, we got to recognize that this is also an exponential equation. It requires a few more steps. But instead of uh, being like 2 to the x, our base here is e to the 2x plus 1, okay? So e happens to be uh, what we call the natural base e, okay? It is a special number in mathematics, and I can go into that, but 
uh, what's I'm going off memory here. It's like 2.718, something or the other. It's somewhere in, in this neck of the wood. I really should know this by heart. But um, anyways, it's a it's a, uh, a value. It's like pi, okay? Pi being approximately equal to 3.1415, da, 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 whatever the case is. E represents a number. Okay, now how we calculate E is a whole other, a whole other discussion, but it's a super important um, value in mathematics. So it's so important, we give it its own little variable, just like pi, and we even give it its own little special logarithm button, uh, ln, okay? So uh, just trust me that this uh, uh, natural base E uh, number is extremely important in math. So this is not the variable, it represents an actual number, okay? All right, so knowing that, of course, this is an exponential equation, and we're going to be using logarithms, but the logarithm that we're going to be using is the ln version, okay? So when you have an exponential equation that specifically involves the base E, you use the ln version, not the log, not the log. This is the common log. This is the natural log. We're going to be using ln. All right, so how do we do this? Well, first things first, before we can take the log of both sides, okay, just like we did in this other equation, uh, 2x equals to 10, you need to isolate the power on one side of the equation, and then you want to um, uh, simplify it by putting all the numbers, everything else on the other side. So you want to get it down to this uh, format here, and it, you can see that right here we got a little bit of cleanup work to do. So what we're going to do first is add 8 to both sides of the equation. And now this gives me e to the 2x plus 1 is equal to 10. Okay? All right. Now, at this stage, I am ready to take the log of both sides. Okay? So instead of doing log of both sides, log of both sides, again, the logarithm version, you have two choices, log or ln. Anytime you see e, okay? You're going to be doing the ln version. So we're going to take the ln of both sides. It's going to look like this. ln of e to the 2x plus 1 is equal to ln of 10. Okay, and you can go into your calculator and you can calculate ln of 10. So, you know, even at this stage of the game, if you wanted to turn this to a decimal, you could at this point. You could just go into your calculator and go uh, ln 10, boop, and it would give you a decimal. And you can just get rid of that. But you don't want to do that because that kind of... Uh, messes the flow of the um, the problem solving process. Okay, and there's no need to do it uh, because decimals are going to be an approximation. All right. Now remember when I took the log of 2x in that previous problem, I was able to bring that x in front of the log like this and write this as x log 2. Okay. Well, we're going to use that same concept here, that same property. I'm going to erase this. And what I want to do is bring down this 2x plus 1, All right? So I'm going to put this in front of the ln e. So that's going to be 2x plus 1, all right? ln e equals ln 10, okay? Now, we're doing really good here, okay? ln e happens to be 1, okay? And you learn that when you're... T uh, uh, study logarithms, but if you, by the way, this uh, value e, just like pi, you can find on your scientific calculator. So you can actually plug that in. Of course, you'll have to look uh, where it's at, but hopefully uh, if you don't have a scientific calculator, you know, next time you're at CVS, Walgreens, or something like that, you could pick one up for like 15 bucks these days. Not a graphing calculator, it's different. Uh, of course, graphing calculators are awesome as well. And if you can afford one, okay, I would definitely invest in one if you're going to be doing any math, uh, like, say, college algebra or beyond. Graphing calculator, real quick, has a window, and you can actually graph functions and all kinds of crazy stuff. It's They're awesome. But a scientific calculator doesn't have this ability, but it has all these buttons, all these functions, trigonometric functions, etc. So get away from using your phone if that's what you've been using or a basic calculator. You're going to need something more ro uh, robust. So scientific calculator, again, you can pick them up pretty cheap. All right, so so ln e is one, okay? So that leaves us with this being just a one, all right? This is a two x plus one times one. So really what we have over here is this two x plus one 
equals ln 10. Now again, I can go into my calculator and go ln 10 and a decimal will pop out, okay? But there's no need for me to get that decimal here. Remember, I'm just solving for x. So I'm gonna subtract one, okay, from both sides of the equation. All right, just a reminder, again, this is just a number. So I'm just kind of computing that number. So now I got 2x equals ln 10 minus 1. So x, to get x, I just need to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So x would be equal to, let's go and write this out, ln 10 minus 1, put that in parentheses, uh, over 2. And there would be my solution to this exponential equation. Now, um, if you gave me, not this one, this guy, here was our original problem, okay? So uh, a couple things here, right? Uh, so again, what we're talking about, the big picture concept is, one, um, exponential equations are solved by logarithms, okay? Now, in another video, I'm sure I will do logarithmic equa uh, equations. They're solved by exponents because these are inverse functions of one another, right? And that means something. Uh, the, these words, functions and inverse functions, their graphs, range, domain, all this other kind of good stuff, all right? Uh, you know, this is uh, related topics to this. But, you know, the whole idea is, uh, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you might be studying uh, equations, you know, at this level, is you need to be able to solve different types of equations, okay? And understand what kind of functions you're dealing with, okay? And hopefully... This helps you out. But anyways, go back to this um, answer. If you gave me this as your final answer, most teachers would be okay with that, okay? Um, of course, again, if I wanted the decimal version of this, I would want you to go ahead and do all your number crunching and go ahead and give me the decimal. But again, uh, you know, the whole point here is for you to understand a little bit more about exponential equations. Okay, so a um, couple of quick things here if you're still uh, hanging out with me in this video. <laughs> so one is this, none of this is gonna stick, okay, unless you practice it. You gotta practice, okay? And you gotta put this in your notes. Or if you're studying it and you're like, okay, write this down and practice this, okay? That's important because if not, uh, just, you know, I uh, gotta emphasize that watching people do math is not a substitute for you doing the math. Even though you understand what's going on, you could even do this problem again, you know, maybe say, hey, listen, I know he just did it, you know, go ahead and try it. You know, e to the 2x plus 1 minus 8 equals 2. If you have your calculator out, see if you can do all those steps by yourself. All right. But the main point is practice, practice, practice. And um, also when you're practicing, practice correctly. Okay. Write all those steps out, etc. That's why I really recommend, um, you know, like something like my math program because I literally do so many problems. I mean, like I have thousands of problems solved where I'm doing each specific step. And I really get deep into all these particular topics. But whether it's my program, your class, whatever, if you're studying math, practice and, be, you know, do things in such a way that you can evaluate each step and you know what you're doing, okay? Because the, these skills you'll need uh, in future mathematics. And you, don't, you never know. You might be like, nah, I just got to take this college algebra class and I'll be all done with math. Well, listen, I've heard that so much. Uh, from people, next thing you know, they're like, oh, I switched majors. Oh, or now I'm going to do this. I got to take calculus. <laughs> you just never know. If you're learning math, learn it right for the long run. Okay, so if this video helps you out, uh, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my channel, hopefully you'll consider becoming a new subscriber and posting new stuff all the time. And um, finally, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures and have a great day.